Six thirty-four and a half. We'll start the meeting. <laughs> oh my God. Progress. All right. Um, any need for so we do we have a few executive uh, I have one which one? is uh, personnel related to the highway department oh that was mine as well it might be the I same thing I think so I think I've heard that you've heard some things from <laughs> okay. that all right um, anybody else have anything okay you need to make a motion to go in executive right no well I'll move we do yeah <laughs> I'll second it all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. Okay, and then we uh, we do need to amend the agenda with COVID updates and coin drop for the fire department. Is there anything else? Motion, Motion. to approve agenda as amended. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, anything on the uh, minutes of last meeting? I don't see anything. Sign on the bottom, John. My name is. Is it on the next page there, Joe? Oh. Could be, I think so. Doo -doo. There you go. Oh. Wake up. Anything on the orders? Oh, I see they had a $2,400 expenditure on the, one of the 550 trucks there, the highway garage. It says brake, looks like it was a brake job, I guess. It must be they did a pretty thorough, complete brake overhaul for that money. Is that, that's Earl's, right? Can you tell me? They can never get enough information on that order. Earl's truck repair replaced RT rear right rear springs and installed bigger overloads. Removed and replaced U bolts and torqued reinstalled wheels and torqued checked AC system. Everything seemed to be fine. Removed and measured Freon R134A needs 1.63 pounds. It had 2.09 pounds. Plug truck into computer and found a code for low voltage or circuit open on sensor A, which is on the passenger side front of truck and air filter box. Replaced AC um, pressure, recharged AC. Kind of tuned her up. Yep. Seems like somebody <coughs> added some Freon to it at some point and yeah. got it a little over full. So it's oh, like, yeah. yeah. Well, 1.6 to yeah. 2, it. It, it doesn't grow in the mm -hmm. system unless no. somebody puts it in. We'll get the investigators on it. Mm -hmm. John, the watershed taxes, is that for access to Nick Wackett? No, that's our town forest block in the town of Chittenden. Chittenden. We have 290 acres, and I think yeah. they charge us based on the ridge. A part of the parcel is west of the ridge. A part of the parcel is east of the ridge. Oh, that's why it's, it's in two different chunks. I think so. Oh, okay. I think that's in the current use program. That's too. correct. There's so we have much cheaper than it could uh, be. Okay. That's for sure. When Alan was on the board, we kind of switched that. He enrolled around. it in current use. That's right. Nice. Got it. Do we have anything else? If not, I'll pass these down to you. There is the two main ones and two or three debit cards.
Uh, yes. <clears throat> 14,068.39. Right there on the text there. Thank you. I'm still learning after 13 years. Speaking of payroll, there it is. manager's report. Thank you, Alicia. Um, in, on the West Creek Road project, after the completion of the contractor's work to grind up the asphalt on the southern end of the road, the town highway crew added some stone to build up the road, graded the road, and rolled it for compaction. As we've discussed, we will look for ways to um, find the resources to pave this portion of the road, hopefully for next construction season. But as I say, we are starting the budgeting process uh, this fall, so hopefully we can factor that in. Wilk Paving has completed this year's paving work for the town. Uh, they resurfaced Markowski Road, Hitchcock Road, Adams Road, Mountain View, and River Street. As usual, the highway crew quickly followed up by laying down stone shoulders and um, working on driveway transition points. The highway foreman has been in touch with line striping companies and we hope to get uh, this work soon, uh, done soon. Uh, on Monday, August 16th, a contractor performed chip sealing operations on the unpaved portion of Oxbow Road. And that was an interesting process to observe where they had uh, a layer of half inch stone, asphalt emulsion, another layer of stone and more asphalt and then a fine a final layer of stone on top but mm -hmm. compaction after each layer kind of like uh, putting down layers of a sandwich so we'll see how it holds up and see how our pilot program did maybe we can think about using it elsewhere if it's successful mm -hmm. hopefully at the very least it'll keep the dust down which was the primary goal there yeah. The grant-funded stormwater project to be sited at the rear of the firehouse parcel is moving forward with the Regional Planning Commission having recently hired Masterson Excavating in Bristol to do the work um, sometime before November 1st. Stay tuned for further information as it becomes available. We're familiar with Masterson. They installed a couple of box culverts uh, in East Pittsford uh, about six or seven years ago and did a fine job. The town has received payment in the amount of $145,882.38 from the American Rescue Plan Act, known as ARPA. Uh, that's half of the amount that we're expecting. Another payment in the same amount is expected for next year. In addition, the state has persuaded the federal government to redirect $120 million in money that had been earmarked for Vermont counties, redirected that to the towns of Vermont. So we are anticipating learning soon as to how much additional funding the town might receive in these additional ARPA funds. Hmm. More good news. Yeah. Um, the Sullivan and Powers folks will be in town from September 7th through the 10th to perform their annual audit of the town's books. On Friday, September 10th at noon, the town plans to um, host its uh, annual staff appreciation picnic at the rec center. Hopefully the audit is done by then. Mm. We'll certainly inv invite the auditors if that'll put them in a better mood. <laughs> um, it was canceled last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the town has received the results of a one-week traffic study of Hollister Quarry Road 
were formed by the Rutland Regional Planning Commission. Um, we had asked for that uh, for several reasons, one of which was uh, a neighbor or two uh, concerned about uh, vehicles they believed were traveling at high rates of speed. There is now a zoning proceeding pending which touches on traffic uh, and other issues up in that area. So the board either can ask that I put the matter on the agenda for a possible discussion of adjusting the speed limit in that area, or the board might want to wait and see how things play out with that pending zoning matter before we get into that issue. I'd hold yeah. off. I think so. I think that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Um, the solar there's a solar project apparently on the um, on the offing in the offing for Adams Road at 574 Adams Road. The town has received word of a planned solar array. Um, the town manager has uh, requested presentations by the would-be developer from both before both the planning commission and the select board, and they've agreed to try to arrange that. So stay tuned for that. When's the picnic? Saturday. I'm sorry, Friday, September 10th at noon. There'll be a memo coming. Uh, I just want to say West Creek Road is a hundred times better. Mm. So if anybody complains about it being dirt, um, <laughs> there's something wrong with them because it's it's probably it's as smooth as the paving that was done on that other section, which isn't all that smooth, huh. but it's it's good. They did a good job. Nice. Thanks. Appreciate hearing that. I'll pass on the word. Uh, Chip. That's my impression as well. I took the drive. <clears throat> it seems like toward the Proctor end. Maybe there's not been as much traffic or compaction. Well, that corner. Yeah. The corner is a little, a little loose, but it's a little loose. I think with time. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, chip seal and chips in. How, how long a strip did that? See, did that go from the blacktop to the other blacktop that goes up there? Yeah, hill? I think I think it covered the together. entire unpaved portion. I haven't been up there, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Well, this is kind of an experiment. I anyway. think so, yeah. It's a cost-effective one. Let's hope it, it turns out to be a good product. It may mm. work out well. Any select board member remarks? No. Um, no, yes, other maybe. than, well, well you got to <laughs> think. No, other than uh, we had a special meeting at regional planning last night. I was there for part of it, but I had to be back here for BCA. Uh, talked about Casella's solar panel in the gravel pit. And it was just a letter one in favor of. So. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Any public comment? Oops. All right. We'll skip to new business. Jason, since you're already on, we can uh, discuss the uh, coin drop for the fire department. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as vice president of the Nick Waggett Holmes Company. Um, that I come before you tonight uh, to ask permission for you guys to allow us to move forward with the state process in, uh, and having a coin drop for the uh, fire department in lieu of not being able to have the haunted house because of, of COVID. Um, you know, as I, as I thought about this, um, there are a lot of other organizations that, that do uh, coin drops and being one of those organizations and seeing what it takes, really the, the fire department has to be a part of every coin drop. And they're doing, helping with coin drops for everybody else, but they're not doing one for themselves. And uh, in this time where we can't um, have the haunted house, I just feel like uh, this would be a good time for them to do one for themselves. Uh, I've run it by Chief Hempel. Uh, I've run it by past Chief Hooker, and uh, we all agree that we think it would be a good idea, but to, we'd like to get your blessing on it as well. And we'd like to uh, have that the October 23rd would be our first choice, um, and as a second choice, it would be October 30th from 9 to 1. Um, those would be the, the choices that we would prefer to do something. Um, the 23rd was our first choice just because the tractor parade was going on and we thought we could do the coin drop and then the tractor parade and kind of tie it all into one sort of bigger event. Mm -hmm. 
question, do we know what time the tractor parade will be coming through town? I don't know. I Kelly, 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 Kelly found time. it before, yeah. long okay. before okay. I did. I just wonder, is is the fact of the that the tractor parade might be going down a stretch of Route 7 uh, a problem? It begins at 1 o'clock. Oh, well, there you go. Done. Okay. Yep. I know, so what was the time? The tractor parade is only going to be... Yep. Yeah. What, what, so. day, or what time was the coin drop? Nine, nine to one. one. Nine and to the one. Parades that starts yeah, at thinking. one, so we'll just yeah. floor it into another one. Yeah, we're just thinking nine to one, but you know, if you'd rather we do nine to noon, or well, I think no, it'd be fine. fine. We we'll just, yeah. just, yeah, we stop when they start. Yeah. <laughs> the only, the only other issue is uh, the fact that um, two weeks earlier on the ninth, there will be a humane society coin drop, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. Be yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Have anything to say about yeah, this. they need to hear from the That's from the town that we yeah. that we approve it, and we need to also provide Chief Warfel's signature on a state form. But uh, Jason will want to be in touch with J uh, Brian Sanderson at the uh, Vermont Agency of Transportation. I can give him, you his contact info, Jason, and he can tell you what the where to get the form and when to submit it. Yeah, I, I, I think actually he have. Yeah, I have the form. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure you pointed out from the previous <coughs> that we did for my organization, and uh, I actually worked with Eric Hell some. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I just uh, we just need your permission to move forward with the application process, and and uh, and then see what the state has to say. Got it. Right in there. Motion to approve the coin drop for October twenty third from nine to one. What, I just have a question. When is the libraries? That's coming up much shorter, much closer. Uh, it's much sooner. I'm just thinking of no. the ones that have come through. Yep. Well, so I think that's, that's in September, I think. September, yeah. I think. I'd rather be sure that. I think so. We well, well, well yeah. I don't want here where we write stuff down. <laughs> or, I know, I should be right here. But yeah, <laughs> September 28th? <coughs> August 28th. August 28th. Okay. Right. All right. So, so we're good. good. Yep. All right, way. so uh, we had a motion and a second. All in okay. favor say aye. 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 All right, Jason. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Got it. I, thank I, you. I don't want to be known as the coin drop kid. <laughs> <laughs> now you yeah, will well, be. You're going to say, yeah, now you are. Yeah. We'll put you on the middle of the road in your wheelchair. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's buggy and it's helmet. Or, or on your crutches and then you can jump out of the way. <laughs> or, or at least attempt to, right? Yeah. There you go. All right. All right, see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. How about we do um, discuss plans to resume annual tax sale process? Yes. On every year before the pandemic, the town engaged in a process to. Um, prevent um, property tax delinquencies from getting out of hand by way of holding an annual tax sale. And generally, um, we sent out um, letters to those people who were more than two years delinquent with a balance of more than $1,000, letting them know of their delinquency and that if not paid um, within the town's uh, policy on tax sales, um, they would be subject to a tax sale. Mm, three times out of four, those people um, come forward and make necessary payments. And occasionally we have maybe two or three properties that make it all the way to a tax sale. Um, and again, that has been the method by which the town's kept its books in pretty good shape and kept delinquencies from getting too big, which has happened in other towns where they don't have the discipline of a tax sale annually. So anyway, we held off on that last year, obviously due to the pandemic and the economic impact of the pandemic. But um, one might argue that now we've, that we've re returned to something close to normal and that there's been substantial aid provided to people uh, in various ways mm -hmm. that the town of Pittsburgh might want to resume the practice of tax sales. How many people right now are subject to that? Linda told me that for now it looks like about a dozen. 
Okay. And generally, that's about the same number we always have. Yeah, okay. It seems like we write the letters to the dozen or so. Mm -hmm. We get compliance yeah. with seven or eight or nine. Yeah. We have a sale scheduled, and then maybe one or two get resolved on the eve of, and maybe one or two are subject to sale. And even if there is a sale, the taxpayer has a year to redeem right. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make a motion we go back to having our tax sale. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but it yep. has to happen. Yeah, All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> um, let's see. All right, so discussion of process for recruitment of new town manager. Yes, uh, as you know, Madam Chair, um, in executive session at the last meeting, I announced my plans to step down as town manager in March. Um, and the general view of the board seemed to be that we'd like to at least explore a partnership with VLCT who might be able to help the board recruit and hire uh, a replacement. Um, in tonight's packet, you'll see that they plan to issue a proposal soon and that they hope to be able to present it to the board at a September meeting. Uh, meanwhile, they've suggested uh, that we can do some homework by looking at our job description, uh, pay and benefit package, and we can also probably look at what other town managers and similarly sized towns are earning through a um, compilation that VLCT issues annually. So for the next packet, I'll be happy to have that for you all to look at and digest, and that'll kind of help inform our discussion with VLCT. come to my mind and I just have to mention for consideration is <clears throat> one of our town men, I don't know if it was you John or if it was Kathleen, but we put an ad in the Rutland Herald and uh, one of the town men, you remember, was, was it before you were on the board, uh, Tom? Mm, I'm trying to think, it was. We had one town manager that we hired through an ad in the Rutland Herald. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that I may be wrong, but I think that the uh, was the LTC we've used them before. Yeah, yeah. They do a good job. I think is it a minimum of ten thousand dollar fee. I don't know. They haven't quoted uh, us a proposal. That I may be wrong on that, but <coughs> if like we uh, we took a thought, if we uh, put an ad in a local paper or an Herald or Burlington Free Press or whatever for a, a week or so, uh, nothing comes of it. Uh, do we, have, we have time enough, I think, to do this and not cut ourselves short on, we don't want to get into box into a corner for mm -hmm. time. No. Uh, the uh, the, the idea of the VLCT <laughs> consultation is not just about uh, advertising no. position, it's also vetting candidates, <coughs> recommending who they think would be the strongest ones to right. interview, right. and then helping negotiate, I think, the terms of a right. contract. So maybe we can hold your idea uh, for now, Joe, see what VLCT see proposes, what right. and then you, yeah. can all, you can always look at that as a plan B of doing uh -huh. it kind of yourself. Yeah. Right. I, I think, <laughs> as I recall, uh, the league, they kind of narrow it down and give the board a, a short list yeah. Well, they start with a large list. They just I was just going to say, they also out. must have a yeah. much wider. Yeah. 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 But, but ultimately, Joe, you are the <coughs> customer. So you could <coughs> customize this process as yeah. a board however you wish, either with or without VLCT. But even if we work with VLCT, you can tell them that you'd like to maybe take a slightly different approach than they're proposing. So right. there's, it's not take it or leave right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't believe. Uh, no, but I, I think we should at least yeah, see what their proposal yeah. is. I mean, if it's, it's pretty good out, if it's outrageously expensive yeah. and, yeah. you know, then we... Hopefully they save us the money and salary for well, right. years. Yeah, That's yeah. usually what happens. I mean, we can't diddle-dally around yeah. forever because their yeah. time will run out. When did yeah. you say they're they're gonna the September? They, they said September they'd be ready to meet us either the first meeting oh, okay. 
or the second one. Right. That's the first or the fifteenth. Okay. I think I'll probably you. before the so packets go out. Oh, I know. So by by next um, right. Friday, when the packets go out, I would imagine there'd be a proposal Something. there to you to look at. Okay. okay. And Great. some research I will put together for you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think maybe one of the things. I mean, we're looking. We were looking for economic development when we were looking for a rec director, and that didn't work out. Maybe we need Can to be tied in? incorporate that mm -hmm. into our town manager. What for we're sure, looking yeah. for. For sure. Definitely. One thing um, you might want to consider: um, uh, we are going to have some savings this year. This year, from Linda Drummond's part-time status, mm -hmm. and Alicia had asked about that going forward. I asked. Linda Drummond about that and she said hey maybe a new town manager who, who hasn't worked with her or whatever might want a full-time assistant like has been the tradition here oh. so that's something where you might have or you might have savings if a new town manager didn't feel he needed 40 hours uh, but that'd be probably a discussion to have with the candidate that you zero in on sure yeah that's a good point Got some thoughts here. Mm -hmm. Take session. A lot of doors open right at this point. That's right. That we have to consider. And you do have seven months, nearly seven, nearly seven months. The thought has gone through my mind. I had a conversation with the. Uh, oh, he, he passed on now, but he was filled in as a town manager here for a little while there. Uh, Don Nicholas. Don Nicholas. Does. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, he he uh, in one of our visits that we had, uh, he uh, led me to believe that a town manager's job for Pittsford didn't necessarily have to be a full-time job, although you have some real good comments to make on that, that <coughs> I don't know if it's possible that, has Proctor ever, if there was any possibility of sharing a, a town manager with another town such as Proctor? Or well, they just got there and they just, a new well, town I manager. Think, <laughs> just along that line, if you were, I think, Chittenden, because they're considering, I believe, getting a town manager. So along that line, there's, hmm. you think that's a... That, there's, that's also, a there's also a something less than a town manager which is a town administrator. That's right. And if there's a real active select board who really wants to roll their sleeves up and kind of take charge of it, you can have an administrator who's more like just the person who ex executes what you've decided uh, should be done. Uh, that's a model that's available and other towns have used it. Rutland Town has used it. Um, Proctor used there. to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Proctor used to have one and they decided ultimately they wanted more of a manager. So that's something also that VLCT could discuss with you, those options. Sure, yeah, okay. Now, now Middlebury, correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you folks know anything different, but Kathleen, she worked up there before she, she came here and she, she was did. some, some she was sort of, a, uh, of an administrator, like you mentioned, if I remember right. I think she they was an assistant, a, I think she was an assistant to the town manager. The town manager. Oh, right, well, so that's a bigger here. town and they had a lot more going on. Yeah, oh yeah. So yeah. there, there yeah. is a lot several more. options. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. She came here and then went to Killington and then back to Middlebury. Oh, yeah. Well, um, You've been in the, in the seat, so you I know. I think, I think, I think oh, yeah. what you'll see in the next packet is, along with whatever VLCT is proposing, is excerpts from an annual survey of all the towns um, that have town managers or, and or administrators. Yeah. And you can kind of see for yourself what, well, where we what size town seems to yeah. do what and what size town or sophistication of town pays this kind of benefit versus that kind of benefit, those will all be helpful background for mm -hmm. you. Right. And that's also, I think, the kind of stuff VLCT is there to prepare to advise you about as well. Right? Yeah. All right. That's their business, right. so to speak. Yeah. All right, moving on to COVID updates. Uh, yes, um, I certainly don't want to jam anything down anybody's throat. We live in fraught political times, of course, where everything is political. But, um, as you may have heard, the guidance from the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, uh, is now that they recommend that people, even those that are fully vaccinated within counties of substantial or high transmission rates for COVID, 
wear face masks while indoors in public settings. Unfortunately, Rutland County is now among those counties as it is now experiencing a substantial rate of transmission according to their website. Um, therefore, you may wish to recommend that residents and staff wear face masks while indoors on town property. If you do so, you can always withdraw the recommendation if and when transmission rates decline. Some experts I've heard suggest that this might happen by early to mid-September. So anyway, I've just attached what we could use if the board wanted to issue some kind of a recommendation notice. And I've included the website that shows Rutland County as a county of substantial uh, transmission. And four confirmed cases. In the oh, yeah. So I heard uh, it's not official. Or at the academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've suspended, closed it down a week early. Did you hear that, John? I did not. That's about five o'clock tonight. I heard that. I don't know if it's true oh. or not, but. Well, that's funny because they always, usually at uh, Friday about 4.30 is when the parade ends up, and it was, it was no today or yesterday, yeah. right? They left early, so yep. that makes they sense. Left. I did ask uh, Brandon, Wes Rutland, and Proctor what they're doing. I've noticed. Didn't hear from Brandon. Wes Rutland doesn't have a meeting till the 30th of the month. And uh, Stan Wilbur says, not as yet, but he would look into it as mm -hmm. to whether they think that's appropriate and proper. No, no, no. Hmm. Well, it's a, it's a tough question, really, because you're here. I think somebody, at some point you have to take the politics out of it, though. And, here's and go with to the damn some other people. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. I what, don't know. What are the feelings of? those of you here in the office. I really haven't discussed it with them. And okay. again, all I'm wondering is if the board wants to recommend it in keeping with what CDC Personally, is asking. Personally, people coming into the building, I think they should be asked to, to wear a mask. I, I'm not so concerned if the girls are sitting there by themselves, not wearing it, they're in your office. But I think when the general public comes in, there should be a sign out here saying, please wear your mask. But there's an issue also uh, about you know group gatherings, like yeah. I know there was BCA here. Planning right. Commission will stop Those. Zooming soon, and we might want to at least let them know that the guidance, either from the CDC or because from the board, they can Zoom now. And is that they is that they are recommended to wear? It's not yeah. it's not too it's heavy. Not mandated, but recommended. Planning Commission is no longer going to Zoom. They don't have an operator, and they're they're fine with proceeding in person. But we just had that discussion today. I told uh, Mark that as long as we're not a substantial transmission county I don't see that it's needed to do anything but if the board wants to follow CDC guidance we can recommend to the staff and to the boards and commissions polls. that it's recommended that you wear a mask I hate them myself <laughs> well but I I mean I don't have a problem with putting right now a sign yeah. it's recommended, recommended you, yeah. at, per yeah. the guidelines yeah. and explain There's, Rutland County I mean yeah. explain it out mm -hmm. There's signs of commuters tonight on his doors and in the store. Okay, I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's yeah. tonight. Well, that was there. Yeah. They were here on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, so. what, here's what I had in mind. Um, Rutland County, including the town of Pittsburgh, is now among several Vermont counties experiencing a substantial rate of COVID transmission. Therefore, pursuant to CDC guidance, the Pittsburgh Select Board has voted to recommend that all residents wear a face mask while indoors in public spaces, even those who are fully vaccinated. Please stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah sure. well, the next two weeks, it's going to be critical. I'll make that motion that we adopt that policy, the recommendation. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And then uh, ratify approval of assessor error and omission. Yes, um, after our last meeting at which we tabled the Blanchard error and as an omission due to prevailing confusion, That's we, it. Asked, <laughs> we asked the assessor to clarify she did. That's right. I circulated yeah. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did have approvals from Alicia, Dave, and Pelkey, which was good enough to move forward. That's in a majority. But I thought for purposes of transparency that oh. we just, should yeah. just have the full board ratify it okay. in the minutes. Yep. All right. That makes sense. That's why I was confused. I'm like, I thought we already did that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Under cover of darkness. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'll make a motion that I'll we ratify. Second it that we yeah. ratify. Yeah. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, update and delivery of new highway truck. Did it get Jeez, delivered? No, it's no, still there. Still sitting sitting there. there. I saw it today. Yep, I saw it today <laughs> too. We, we've narrowed <laughs> down the issue of, um, of a extended warranty. Uh, he said that that's all he needed to finish the paperwork. Chad is away this week. Maybe he's been trying to hook mm -hmm. up with Chad. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping next week we'll have a truck on hand. Let's stay tuned. All right. I wouldn't have put it on the agenda if I had such a feeble report. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have some news for you. <laughs> In the meantime, they're using their truck. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, at this Same point, it's if they're all winter, I mean, it's, yeah, you know. Yeah, wait until fall time. I don't care. No. All right, that was anticlimactic. Moving Sorry. on. Update on Pittsburgh Day. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, the third and final planning session took place uh, last week on August 12th. Uh, we had a good turnout and lots of enthusiasm is building. We will have in the next two editions of the Brandon Reporter and in the newsletter that will be out um, next week um, a schedule of events. And of course, just for those watching or interested in this uh, at home, um, there will be a 5K road race and a kids fun run in the morning, a cornhole tournament from 12 to 2, then things really kick off with the silent auction and basket raffle beginning at 2 o'clock. Silent auction will be open till 6, basket raffle till 5, and we need to thank Barb Hooker, Sandy Laughlin, Lori Hempel for the silent auction, and also that same group and Katie Davis for the basket raffle. There will be a car show from 2 to 6, and Darren and Tyler Laughlin are sinking their teeth into that. The library will be providing snow cones and a photo booth in the afternoon. Kids' activities will include a bouncy house, dunking booth, slip and slide. Liz Willis will have some young lambs, I think, and a petting zoo. Nice. The uh, Joey Fun Biz gentlemen um, will have a magic show immediately followed by balloon art. The 40th Army Band will be performing between 2 and 3. There will be a helicopter flying in the neighborhood and hopefully landing depending on whether we've given them a big enough parking area, landing strip, at around 3 o'clock. Woodchuck's Revenge, which of course consists of Peter and Christina Cady, will be performing at 3.15 to 4.30. There'll be a square dancing demonstration from 4.30 to 5 with the Cast Off Eights Club. Resolution Band featuring our own Bob Berardo will play from 5 to 6.15 p.m. Satin and Steel will get things really cranking at 6.30 to 9. We'd like to thank Omnia for that. We'll have fireworks at 9 o'clock through CNC Fireworks, and then we'll have a DJ, Amanda Relier, who works with the Jam Man, uh, will be there from 9 9.30 to closing. As we've told everybody before, there will be no evening meal served, but uh, several food trucks will be on site with tables and chairs to provi uh, provided for people to have picnics. Um, donation for goods and services for the silent auction are welcome. Contact Barb Hooker, Sandy Laughlin, um, Lori Hempel, or even our own Helen McKinley. The proceeds of the event are going to the town's fire department and the Christmas for Kids Fund. If there is rain, the fireworks will be held the next evening, September 5 at 9. And as always, anybody who wishes to volunteer helping set up or break down, setting up Friday afternoon, evening, breaking down Sunday morning, please get in touch with me and I'll put you on the list. Yeah. Good hope for good weather. Yes. yes. Oh That's why we moved it to <laughs> September. <laughs> we got to lock out one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Did you want to add, add anything, Tom? Um, no, I just think, I, I think the fire department is going to raise the flag with the 40th Army Band. Singing, playing the national anthem at the opening at two o'clock because that's when they're scheduled to play. So that would oh. be kind of neat. By the band, by the way, the band will be in town Wednesday or Thursday next week for just a few minutes to look over where the we plan to have yeah. them. At I got play. your email. Yeah. Well, that's it until seven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we just take a break. Yes. Well, well, we can go into executive session. Executive okay. session, then we'll be done. Then. All right.